Hey guys, my name's Sam Willis, and today we're going to talk about managing the trauma patient in this micro lecture. So trauma is something you're going to see time and time again, and it's not all major catastrophic trauma either. You've got minor trauma and you've got major trauma, and each of these will give you significant challenges, including depending on where the patient is. You're going to find Sunday afternoons, there's a lot of sports going on, so you're going to be going to people who have sustained sporting injuries. You're going to have to be driving onto the pitch, going into public stands, all those types of things. Um, then you've got the major trauma, road traffic collisions, falls from height. So trauma in its, in its own right is, is broken down into different types of trauma and they all come with their own levels of complexity. Let's talk, talk through um, a, a situ one situation. So you're called to a motor vehicle accident. Somebody's been hit by a car at high speed. When you arrive on scene, the patient is conscious and talking and they're screaming in a lot of pain. Now there's a lot of stressed out bystanders and they're calling you over, come here, come here, paramedics, come here. Um, so that's, um, that's always a sign that the patient's been, been, been injured quite badly because the, the members of the public are usually quite stressed when they witness these things because they're not pleasant to see. So you still have to apply your primary survey, danger, is there anything dangerous to yourself, your crewmate or the public? Response, hello, can you hear me? Stay nice and still, particularly if the patients, the, 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 uh, the bystanders are saying, oh, I hit by this car at high speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, um, I've got a lot of pain in my leg. He hit me and drove off. Now, one of you should be managing the airway at this point and not be distracted by the fact that he's telling you about his leg. So that's what we call a distracting injury. So I would in that case say, look, we need to keep you nice and still. Now, my colleague is going to just hold your head because we don't know if you've got any injuries to your neck. Even if they're saying to you, look, it's my leg, it's my leg. This is where your communication skills really do come into their own. You need to talk reassuringly to them. Look, I know you're saying your leg's hurting, you're suffering from leg pain. We'll sort that out in a minute. But just in case you've got any other type of injury, we need to keep you nice and still. So that's danger, response, airway and C-spine, looking at their breathing and their color and then do their circulation. Now, once you're happy with all those things, your colleague, of course, will be holding your head, trying to avoid the ears so you don't want to take their sense of hearing away. Then you can go down and have a look at the disability. So that might involve cutting the clothes. And of, of course, always get permission from the patient because the last thing you want is a lawsuit. Even though you've, you've saved them and you've helped them, they can turn around and, and, and sue you if you've, injured, if you've damaged their, their, their property. Now, before you expose and you cut through their clothing, it may be that you, that you need to give them some strong pain relief first. So you need to go through those processes. And of course, something to help your colleague because you know, you'll, you'll always be reflecting and thinking about what am I doing? Am I, have I missed anything? At some point, you've got to put some kind of collar on the neck if that's where your service, if what your service is indicated, because the research is showing that ambulance services and research is moving away from collars full stop, not just moving from the, the semi-rigid collars to the soft collars, but they're actually moving full stop away from collars. So if you need to put a collar on, put it on at some point soon, but it's fine while you've got someone maintaining the C-spine. So get permission to cut the clothing, give them some pain relief, have a look at the injury, um, apply the necessary immobilization. It could be something as simple as a vacuum splint to the leg. Of course, if your patient's sitting up, you want to lay them down because according to the nexus criteria, these people who have got a distracting injury and suspect and had trauma are indicated for full spinal immobilization. Now, something we haven't mentioned is catastrophic hemorrhage, which is something we'll cover in another session, but just very briefly, anybody who's got catastrophic hemorrhage, would, you would always treat that first over everything, even before airway. Okay, guys, that's the micro lecture on managing the trauma patient. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, my name is Sam Willis, and I look forward to talking to you again shortly. Cheers. Take care.